In this video, you're going to be learning how to make a uh, album cover that is uh, with the illusion that it's going to be printed as like a vinyl record. Uh, a lot of this is going to be about like using images as texture. So I want to show you a couple examples of ones I have, and then we'll get into what you need to do this. Uh, so here is probably my favorite one that I made for Radiohead. Uh, you'll see that I don't do the band names, I just do the album names on them. Now I have two here that I did for one band because I want to show you with just a few edits they can look dramatically different. So this was the first one that I did and I wasn't super happy with it. So I made a couple changes to it and then I ended up with this. So if you look closely here at these like background little texture images, you'll see they stay the same. And all I did was change like the stock photo of the portrait and the colors and you get a pretty different looking result. Uh, and then a couple other ones I have here, uh, a really cool text effect in this one. I'll show you guys how to make that towards the end of it. And then my last one here where, again, I was trying to go in for like repeating text of some sort with this one. So uh, I'm going to make another one with you guys right now and we'll get the project set up. So things that you'll need. On Schoology, you'll find a folder called Album Cover, and within it, um, you'll have obviously more things later, but just for right now for this video, uh, I you guys will really want this file right here. It's going to be called Texture Package PSD Photoshop Document. Click on it, and it will take you to a Google Drive link. Uh, this file is enormous, so I couldn't put it directly on Schoology. Hit Download to download it, and it's going to say, yo, this is really large, Like, but I promise you there are no viruses in this. Uh, so download anyway, and this may take some time to download, but when it does, uh, I believe it will automatically open up in Photoshop. So we'll just kind of like wait this one out in the video and make sure that it does. Um, it's a good file to just keep on hand for later too. Uh, you'll see what I did for you guys in here in five seconds. All right, oh good, it is automatically opening up in Photoshop. That's what this wheel means. And there it is. All right, good, I already had my other one open just in case it didn't. So I'll close that out and uh, let that save. We'll hop back to this one. So things that you'll find within here, let's look at the layers on the right. The welcome one, you can just hit the eyeball because uh, you don't need that anymore. That's just like my little splash page. These folders here are really what you're gonna take a look at. Um, there's an arrow next to each folder, and if you click that arrow, it opens uh, up the images with inside, and I've color-coded them as well. So you could eyeball each one in and out. And I just made a collection of different textures for you guys I thought that you might want, um, you know, to use for these uh, upcoming projects. So there's, you know, you can see what they all are. I guess I won't read them off. The big one that everybody will be using, though, no matter what, is this plastic wrap texture. And what this does is it kind of gives it like a, like, you, you just go... You just bought it, and you have to like unwrap the uh, plastic like seal. So I think that's a neat look. All right. Anyway, let's get to um, making yours. So you're going to let me close out of all these uh, windows here. We'll close that. We'll close that, and we'll close Schoology. So I went to Google Images, and I'm going to be doing one for the Killers this time. And I just searched their front man, Brandon Flowers, and then I added portrait to the search. So that's why I'd recommend. Um, again, uh, full bodies don't work as well. Group photos are more challenging. So if there is a lead singer, I would recommend just going with one person. Afterwards on Google Images, um, quality of image really matters on this. So where it says tools, hit that. And then size, change that to large. All right, so now anything in here should be good quality to use. I was hoping this one would be good quality. We'll let that load. Yeah, it's amazing quality size down here if it's over a thousand pixels in either direction you're probably good to go so this is 100 percent good um I, you don't even need to save this image what you can do is you can click with two fingers at the exact same time and you'll see an option for copy image go ahead and just copy it because we're going to make our file right now and paste it into it in photoshop i know you already have this uh texture package opened up hit the house or home button up here in the top left and when you do that that'll bring you back to your like main page Hit new file, also in the top left, and here are your dimensions. Where it says pixels here, I'm going to change it to inches, and this is going to be easy for everybody. 12 for the width, 12 for the height, and 300 for the resolution. Uh, untitled one, I'll be calling this album cover example. 
and uh, everything else color mode I, I we could leave it RGB but CMYK will also work leave everything else as default and then hit create should have a nice white square so let's paste our image into here to do that at the top of the screen you're gonna find edit and under edit you will find paste you could just hold down command and hit V that'll do it as well but boom there it is now really large right so if I take the move tool, this top left tool right here that I'm hovering over, I can uh, shrink it down. However, with the move tool, one setting that you're all gonna wanna do is this. Auto select by default is chosen. Click it off, unchoose that, it's very annoying. Show transform controls is off by default. Turn that on by clicking that box. You'll see that it has a box around your image now. So whether your image is too small or too large, you can size it down, move it around, and get it into place uh, wherever you want. I've, I'm going to want him to hit both corners, I think, of the image. Uh, we'll go, actually, that could look good right there. Might even shrink it down a little more. He does have to hit that side. So we'll go about right there and move it down a little further. All right, then when you're done, I always hit return on the keyboard. There are like check boxes around the screen that you can hit as well. Uh, we don't want a background for your character. You just want the character. So here is a really cool, easy way to remove the background. If you're on the newest version of Photoshop, you'll see down at the bottom this little bar that comes with it. One option will literally just say remove background, and it will do exactly that. Ready? I'll hit it and the background is gone, which that feature is amazing. But for whatever reason, if we're not running the newest version, uh, you're gonna want this tool called Object Selection Tool. It's the fourth down from the top right there. And in Object Selection Tool, it will have Select Subject up in the top center of your screen. You can hit Select Subject, and there it is, it selects him but then you would also have to layer mask it afterwards, ready? Because that's all what this other one automatically did. Down here in the bottom of your layers, there's all these buttons. Uh, a couple of these, maybe we went over, like the trash can deletes layers and this one makes a new one. This button right here that's a circle inside a rectangle is add layer mask, watch what this does. That removes the background. So a couple more steps, but um, however you do it, you wanna get rid of the background. Our next thing is we have to make this image black and white. Um, so you'll notice now, if you look where I'm hovering around right here, you have the image thumbnail and you have this layer mask thumbnail. That's the thing that removed the background. You wanna make sure that the image is selected and you can tell it's selected because it has this little box kind of around it. Once it's selected, hold down command and press U as in unicorn. That brings up hue saturation. Turn the saturation all the way down to negative 100 and hit OK. Now we're going to add a color uh, layer to this. So down in the bottom again of your layers, this button here, this, like the half circle, click on that and you will have to like scroll down towards the bottom. You're looking for an option called gradient map. Choose that. And with gradient map, we want it directly onto the character, not the background. So hold down the option key. And that if you kind of place your mouse in between the gradient map layer and layer one, the one with the portrait, you'll see that your icon should change. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for, that down arrow. Click then, because then you'll see that it has this little swoop arrow right there, and it's only going to affect the character, not the background. Okay. Now, our gradient is up here, and it probably didn't give you colors that you want. So click on this and open it up, and there we have it. So the white and the like blonde color that I have, I'm gonna change those. Double click on the square, the little square, and it brings up the color picker, and then you can choose anything that you want. I'm gonna go for more of like a gold kind of vibe over here. And then I'm gonna go for maybe a dark green, or maybe a dark blue, or a dark red. And then what I would recommend is add another one directly in the middle by clicking just once. Then double click and you can change it to anything that you want. Um, oh, I'll explain to you now too that it doesn't matter too much with what we're doing right now because after you get your three colors, we're gonna hit okay. <laughs> now the mode of this is on normal right now, right here where my cursor is. 
you're going to want to change that most likely all the way down here to the bottom to color. And then that way, it doesn't go as crazy as it did before. So if you want to go back into your colors now and kind of move these around to look for adjustments, now is the time to do it that it's on color. Um, maybe I want... And we'll see what I have. Again, this just takes a lot of experimentation, just kind of move these. I wouldn't go any more than three colors because it really does start to go like berserko if you do that. There we go, I like that. Just to check my before and after, there's this history feature. Oh my gosh, it's so much better after, cool. All right, so there's my gradient map. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a background. So we have a background layer here, but I wanna make a new one um, just for the gradient sake. So I'm gonna hit uh, down in the bottom here, create new layer, and then I'm gonna go find the gradient tool. Let me show you where that is, right here. Uh, about halfway down, um, it looks like a ombre. I got this extended menu, by the way, by clicking with two fingers at the same time. There are hidden tools under every tool in Photoshop. So uh, just beware that gradient tool is what we want. Now with gradient, before you even bother picking your colors, Go ahead and click and drag once and make a swipe in any kind of direction. You should get two dots at both the end. Again, this is if we're on the new version of Photoshop. And then what you can do from these two dots is double click them to change the color of the dot to anything that you want like that. Ooh, actually kind of dig these colors. You can also move these lines around. See, I'm kind of moving the yellow by clicking and holding and then I'll move the orange by clicking and holding like that to make it straight, can make it like a little diagonal. We'll see. If that's not working and you don't have this and you're on an old, older version, up here in the top left-ish, you can click this drop down and you can flick through all these folders and they have all these different gradients to choose from, from like their uh, respective colors. So you could do those but I'm hoping that we're all running the newer version and that way you can custom make yours with these two dots. All right, after we have our gradient, now comes what I think is probably the, the more fun part where everybody gets a lot different looking result. You're gonna wanna hop over to the tab called Texture Package that we ho hopefully still have open. So up here, you'll see I have Album Cover Example and Texture Package. In texture, pa te texture Package, the first thing you're going to want to do is get our plastic wrap texture. So over here on the left with the yellow colored one, open that folder and there are 20 to choose from. I'm just going to randomly pick. We're going to go 10. And let's pretend that you want number 10 right now. So with number 10, you uh, want to eyeball... Oh, how you can preview these. You click and there are these little eyeballs that appear uh, right here. And that's how you can see which one's which. So go ahead take a look at them yourself but this is really what we're doing for the sake of this whoa that one's crazy i'm gonna go with 10. once i have 10 and this is the one that i want i'm going to take the move tool this is the top left tool we just used that earlier now i'm going to take this image and watch what i'm going to do i'm going to click and drag it but i'm going to drag it out i'm going to hover over album cover example and then let go inside the photo it says are you sure you want to do this yes Hit OK, and look, the image went from one file to the other. So, but if you go back to Texture Package, you'll see it's still it's still very much there. So, let's go back to our album cover, and there it is. You want this one to be the top layer. So, click and drag it, and drop it all the way at the top. Then, what you want to do is you want to move it. Hopefully, we still have the Move tool selected, all the way to the top left. Click and drag it so that it fills the page, or maybe even a little bit more of the page, however you like. When you're satisfied, hit the return key. This layer mode is currently normal as well. You're gonna be very familiar with layer modes by the end of this project. You're gonna click on layer mode, and for this one, uh, you can look at them all, but in my opinion, by far the best one is screen, okay? Now with screen, some of this might go over your person's face and you don't want that. So what you're going to want to do is take the eraser tool. It's right here. Take a look at where I am. Then you're going to want to take the opacity. See how it says opacity up here at the top and turn it to about 35%, okay, from 100. Then if you click, 
somewhere on your thing, you're going to get this little warning saying, hey, it has to be uh, like converted. Just hit OK. And now uh, you can click and it should erase. Now, my size of my brush is huge right now. See this big circle right here? I can make that smaller or bigger. Next to the letter P on your keyboard, there are two brackets. The left bracket, every time you tap it, makes it smaller, and the right one makes it larger. So I'm going to go smaller and just kind of keep tapping around his face just to get that plastic wrap away from his face. I don't mind it being down here uh, by his hand, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, now that we have that, we need background textures. So go back into your texture package. Whichever one that you had on for the plastic wrap, eyeball that off, and we're going to close up this folder. I'm going to go for a burnt paper texture for the background. So I'm going to open this up, and we'll take a look at what number 9 looks like. That looks good enough. I'm going to select layer 9. I'm going to take the Move tool. I'm going to move it up and out and drop it into here and hit OK. This, though, I want it for like the background. I'm going to click and drag and move it right below our character. So above the gradient, below the character. Make it kind of big. Put it about here. Hit return. Layer modes, where it says normal. This is where it's really up to you. Go through these. Find ones that you think are looking cool, because we're going to really be doing this often, like a lot of these, like not just one. You'll see I'm going to probably try to layer these on. So uh, I like the linear light right there. And then... In addition to layer mode, see where it says opacity? I could lower that too if I want to. So maybe I'll do that right there. I'm going to go back into texture package and find another burnt paper. So let's go to three. Take that, click and drag it up into album cover and drop it. Hit OK. All right. I'm going to rotate it with the move tool as well. So how to rotate is when you are outside the image, you'll see that your cursor changes to like a curve arrow. So you can even rotate, size it. We'll throw it over here, hit OK. Layer mode normal. I'm going to change this one to hard light. And I'll reduce the opacity to like 50%. I'm going to do this for a couple more pieces because I think this will build a neat effect. And we'll see what I get. I haven't done this before, so um, I'll just see what like kind of playing around kind of looks like. And maybe I'll move them below it just to see what that looks like as well. Maybe I'll just leave them on top. I want a couple more. 13. And whatever layer, linear burn, that look cool. I need something for the bottom. So maybe to change it up from paper texture, I might go to, uh, we'll try broken glass. Uh, and we'll do seven. So I'm going to click and drag that up and drop it here, hit OK. Make it big. I really do want the shatter somewhere that's noticeable. And then we'll look at layer modes for this as well. Whoa. what screen does because screen is normally good for ones that are dark but have like one or two cool light spots so do that maybe I'll throw this over the character that's pretty cool all right so I'm pretty satisfied with that um, I wouldn't mind one more image for the bottom whoa I just rotated my image let me fix that don't worry about that. Let's go back into texture package. Let's grab like a rust. 
rust texture. I'm just gonna grab a quick random one, 18. I pull that photo out, take that, take that. We can drag that up. Ah, did that, that didn't come in right. Uh, drag, drop. Oh, cool, ready? Yeah, that's what it needed. Cool, neat. All right, so now that we have that, we're ready for text. Um, let me show you what to do with text. So what I use is this website called dafont.com. And on dafont.com, you'll find all these different categories of fonts up here at the top. You could scroll for like some recent ones. You could literally search for things. Uh, the Killers is a band from Las Vegas. So I'm gonna type in Vegas up here in the search bar and we'll see what I get. I like this Las Vegas one right here. Um, it does seem to be the neatest one of all the Vegas ones. I'm just gonna go with it. So I'll hit download when I like it. And then I'll go up here, here are my downloads. Mine came in a folder, yours might not. If it does come in a folder, double click it. Because what you're looking for here is either a .otf file or a .ttf file. When you find that, double click it and you'll see that it opens up in a application called Fontbook. You will see an option here that says install, so go ahead and hit install. Now you do need to remember the name of the font. This gets tricky. You can go to my fonts over here on the left, and it gives you just a preview of what they look like with the letter A, um, and we could try to find it. I think it was called Las Vegas Demo. There it is right there. The reason why you need the name of it, when you go back to Photoshop, there's a tool over here on the left it's called the type tool. It's like a literal T right there. When you select that tool, up in the top left is like the name of the font that you want to type with. Delete whatever is in there, and you're going to type whatever one that you just downloaded. So mine was Las Vegas Demo. There it is. Some other stats I would quick change is the size. Drop that all the way down to like 150 to start, or if that's not the max, 72 is like the old max. After that, uh, the color, I go, I change this to stark white for now, and then we'll show you some settings that you can change later. So what you want to do with type, um, let's select your topmost layer, which should be the plastic wrap one, and click just once. This is like a whole lesson in and of itself, and it'll say lorem ipsum. Let me move that over so you can see it, lorem ipsum. That's just like default text that's ready to be edited. So now you can type whatever you want. So I'll type the, or well, let's see what it looks like in smaller, yeah, killers. You could type it in different layers too. Like I could just type, ready, the, and then I can take the move tool here and like move it around by itself. So maybe I make the really small. And then, there we go. Oh, I did say though, I'm not doing band names, I'm doing album names. So um, let me change the killers. Their original album was Hot Fuss. So we'll put Fuss there. Hopefully that's snapping to the, and we'll change the to Hot. All right. So now that I have, I wanna get that little bar out of there, there we go. Uh, now that I have my font up here, I wanna show you some tricks that you can do with them. If you had typed multiple words in, so I have a layer over here called hot and another one called fuss, you're gonna to wanna to merge them together. So hold shift and click on both of them so that they both glow a like light gray. Then hold command and hit the letter E. All right. Uh, the basic one. Here's just the one that everybody can mess with. But if you're like, hey, I want to do that one in like the Ed Sheeran one. Let me show you that one again. This one was more complicated. I'll show you that on an individual basis. Uh, where was that? This one was tricky. Um, this, I literally just took that text layer and duplicated it a bunch of times. So I'll show you that now too. So if I wanted to make this hot fuss over and over again, see how I have fuss selected, that's just the text. 
you can hold down command and tap the letter J. You see how I made a copy? If I take that and move the copy down, I have two. So like I could load this whole thing up with these if I wanted to. I could put like one here, I could command J that and move it over here, and then just like literally like load the page with it, which honestly could look pretty cool. Wanna see what that looks like real quick? Watch this, ready? Command E, Command J, move it down. Command J, move it down. Command J, move it down. Not too bad, right? And then like if you offset it a little bit so that like it's kinda like that. Like you can play around with this. You can get really cool results, um, you know, and not a lot of time, just a little bit of like exploring. Yeah, like I actually like that. Um, I might even come back to that. So anyway, let's see what the other uh, option was. How far back do I have to go? Right there. So our text layers merged. So down at the bottom, you're going to find a button called FX right here. And what FX is like special effects. Check out all of these, but I'm going to show you three, I think, right now. The first is gradient overlay right here. When you click on that, that will give you a gradient that pops on on the color. Click in here, you'll get all these folders of colors like from before, and you can just literally pick any of them that you think kind of work. Um, you could try to match it with like the colors in, from the one in your, uh, like your character or something like that. So I might go back to the blues, see if I can get like a pale blue or something. Yeah, like that. Or maybe I'll go at reds and see what's in reds. Here's red. There's not too many in red. Orange. That might go. Yeah, we'll see what that does. All right, so now that I have a gradient overlay and you're already in here, here are some other ones. Look for one called drop shadow. And with drop shadow, when you click on it, checkbox it in and click on it, uh, mess around with these. The first thing is the opacity. You can make that, probably make it a little bit higher, maybe like upper, upper 50s. Distance is like how far the drop shadow is. Spread is kind of like how uh, like intense it is from the original object. And size is literally just like how much uh, do you want of it. Then the last one I like is stroke. What stroke does when you click checkbox it and select it, you can choose the size and you see this like white thing coming from it right now. That's like how big it is with the size position. I would always leave that outside in my opinion and blend mode, those are what we were messing with before. You could change that to like overlay and then the uh, thing kind of like uh, almost glows in a way. So I can hit okay and you'll see that right there like that. So that actually is pretty neat. And then what you could even do, ready for one last thing, the whole text layer itself where it says normal, you can make the whole thing like an overlay if you want to. Oh, it doesn't work because of the gradient. Never mind. So if you do gradient, uh, that is not an option. So there's one with just like the color, like nice and simple. Um, or you could go back and do all that crazy stuff that I was doing with uh, moving them around, which honestly kind of liked that better. So. You guys can play around with it. I'm gonna do that one more time for my own sake. And uh, then we'll show you how to save the file and you'll be done. So move that there. Down one, down one, and down one. I'll merge all these together and I'll move them up a little bit so it's a little off kilter. I think it has to go behind him. I don't really like that in front of him. Ah, uh, here, ready? Layer mode normal. I can mess around with these and see if any of these other ones look neat. Now again, it is just white text. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so maybe I'll do subtract and then maybe I'll lower the opacity of the text. Neat. Yeah, cool, big fan. All right, when you're done with your album cover, you're gonna do two things. You're gonna save it to the cloud and to your uh, computer. So file, save as, and then uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'll be calling mine album cover five because this is the fifth one I made. 
And this again is Creative Cloud right now. See how it says Creative Cloud up here? Then I'm gonna hit Save. You wanna make sure that there's a little cloud icon by yours. Now let's do another one that we're ready to submit to Schoology. So you're gonna do File, you're gonna do Save As, but instead of Creative Cloud in the bottom left, you should see Save on your computer. So go ahead and hit that. And then Where, you wanna change the Where to Desktop, and then you can also just hit Save. Hit OK. And let's minimize out, close out my font book, close out of my downloads. Uh, these examples here, I can get rid of them because I'm done showing you my examples. And hey, there's our file. That's the one that you're going to submit to your Schoology assignment, and you're done. Good job.